Hey guys, Eamon here, back with another League video. We're going to be checking out our first State of Origin content, I guess would be the... Yeah, for, first State of Origin content we've done. Um, yeah, mo most of the, like, the highlights and stuff from the State of Origin are blocked for me when I try to upload them to YouTube. So we're just going to do be doing this video. It's more of a documentary type thing instead of like actual highlights, I guess. I'm sure there will be highlights, but yeah, it's more of uh, just talking about the team, I'd assume. Um, looks like it'll be a good video, though. And uh, yeah, this is recommended by Backy Cones. Uh, he's been probably the most active uh, commenter, I guess, for, for my uh, for my league stuff. So yeah, thanks a lot for all the stuff, bud. Um, yeah, he, he, you've been there for all the live streams, too, so that's awesome. Um, and yeah, uh, for anyone who does like want to watch a live stream or we're most likely going to be doing the warriors for seagulls uh game for round six of the nro uh, i'm trying to do one one game a week that i can watch along with uh you guys and yeah it's been a lot of fun we've got like i think we, I think we had like 30 viewers both weeks i think and super active chat so yeah if you have you uh, if you have any interest in like chatting with people about the nro yeah go uh make sure to check that out when, when we're when we're live and yeah, so this video is by Alpha again. They had a couple of videos we've done that have been really good. Um, yeah, so make make sure to drop them a sub and like their video for sure, because yeah, that they're uh, yeah they make good stuff. So go show them some support. I got all their info in the description, so you can go click to it right now. But yeah, so this is Eight Straight, the Queensland Maroons documentary, 2006-2013. And yeah, look at looks at the looks at the Queensland Maroons from yeah. So yeah, so what do I know about the state of origin? Um, I guess the general stuff I know it's the players that were like from or that represent the Queensland area, and then like is it the New South Wales? Let me state of origin. Maybe I can actually just go do this right now yeah uh yeah new south wales blues and queensland maroons referred to as australia australian sports greatest rivalry yeah and so you, they do a best of three or not a best of three they play three matches um i think you guys said usually they end up being like at like two one there's occasionally been like a like a one 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 and one uh, situation and then teams will also try to go for like the sweep the 3 0 sweep to get like extra breaking rates um yeah so yeah looks like yeah, queensland won eight straight which is that's wild um i guess we'll find out why in this video i was gonna ask why but i guess we will we'll probably learn in this um and yeah yeah we'll, we'll just hop into it um if you've been enjoying my videos make sure to drop me a sub as well like the video comment anything i should check out in the future um yeah, I've been trying to like even out my my league and rugby videos a bit more because you guys in uh, in Australia, New Zealand have been showing me a lot of support. So yeah, we got we got to start pumping out a bit more, a uh, bit more, a bit more. Uh, why can't I speak right now? We, we got to start pumping out a bit more league content for you guys. So yeah, this will be the first uh, first big one I guess we'll do. Um, yeah, let's just hop into this. Oh, and I completely forgot. Yeah, we have uh, we got Rosa. Rose up joining us today. She had a big long day in the rain, so she is soaking wet. Or well, she got dried off, but she's yeah, she's a bit wet and she's passed out. So we'll see if she uh, if she sticks around for the video. She's usually there sometimes, but not always. State of Origin footy, regarded as the toughest, most fierce, and most emotionally charged contest in rugby league. It's the crown jewel of our beloved game and has carried with it some of the greatest narratives and stories. The Queensland Maroons' eight straight wins between 2006 and 2013 were one of those historic moments that will remain etched in rugby league history and is a topic that needs a deep dive. Let's go, good intro. Now, before we get started, a shout out to my Patreon, Tio, who got to suggest this documentary because of his ongoing support. If you want benefits like choosing upcoming videos, become a Patreon today. The link will be pinned All in right. the comments Okay, go below. check out their Patreon. Let's start this journey in 2006 with the appointment of Mal Meninga as head coach of the Maroons. Going into 2006, Queensland were coming off three consecutive series losses. There was a clear lack of consistency with the Maroons, as they were experiencing a young turnover in players. 
It may have not been clear on the surface during the three-year losing period, but Queensland were building. Cameron Smith, Matty Bowen, Billy Slater, and Jonathan Thurston all okay. debuted during this era and ushered in the new... I, I had a bunch of comments about um, Cameron Smith on my Nathan Cleary video. Um, a lot of you guys said he should he should be up there with the three that they talked about in the Nathan Cleary video, so I'll make sure to make sure to react to him soon. ...period for the Maroons footy team. Now, before this series would start, a huge announcement would be made. It was whether the great Greg Inglis would play for New South Wales or Queensland. Oh, it interesting. It seemed like a big decision at the time, and in hindsight, it was choose. one of the more significant decisions made in State of Origin history. Inglis, born and raised in Barrowville, New South Wales, played his junior football at the Barrowville Tigers, which created okay. a challenge for him to receive eligibility for Queensland. The QRL okay. would claim that Inglis' first senior footy was at Wavell State High School at 17. This would be contended by many and ultimately found okay. untrue by NRL statistician David Middleton, who said Inglis played his senior footy first for New South Wales. Okay. Even with this information, Inglis's Maroons application was granted, allowing him to suit up for the side in Game 1 of the 2006 series. Okay, Going into Game 1, both New South Wales and Queensland were considered even favourites. The addition of a young GI in a trio of Lockyer, Thurston and Smith always put Queensland in contention, even when the three previous yeah, series were lost. absolutely packed, holy. The Blues started strong, finishing off an 85-metre try with replacement half Brett Finch scoring in the corner. More on him later. King would add four more points scoring in the corner before Willie Mason barged his way through the entirety of the Maroons forwards to score a barnstorming try. New South Wales were even getting <laughs> the upper hand in the Biffo, oh, but Jesus. Queensland would not let up, Got with English pushes. scoring two tries in his Origin debut. Stephen Bell would score in the opposite corner with five minutes remaining, leaving Thurston a conversion from the sideline to tie it up. With now only three minutes remaining, the Blues would find themselves in field goal position, in steps the before-mentioned replacement half Brett Finch. Let's rewind Brett and see Finch. how we got here. Six weeks earlier, Brett Finch wasn't even a starting halfback in the NRL for the Sydney Roosters. He would start to play well coming into Origin, but really was nowhere near Origin selection. Although okay. on the eve of Game 1, New South Wales would find themselves in deep halves trouble. First choice halfback Craig Gow was ruled out of the final training session. Matt Orford was injured and Andrew Johns rejected an SOS call. Finch would receive a call 20 hours prior to the game from the coach Graeme Murray after a two-day bender and had no <coughs> idea he would be selected. <laughs> Through the luck of those circumstances, hungover, he found dusty. himself <laughs> in this moment. The line, last tackle, Finch. Finch takes the shot. It's got the line. Wow, what a moment. incredible moment that was really the Blues a last piece of success for a long time. Is that a PSP ad Although on the, on the jersey? The That's wild. The Maroons, what a they would not play around in game two and were strong and fiery. This match brought a similar fairy tale, but this time for the Queenslanders. After debuting Inglis, who was dropped in game two, mm -hmm. for the steady Adam Mogg, Mogg, who played only seven times in five seasons on the wing, was called into the side. The Maroons by half time led 14-0 and would not take their foot off the pedal. Mogg would chip in with two tries and before you knew it, Queensland were up. 30-0. It was a statement performance as the Maroons yeah. played New South Wales off the park. Thurston and Lockyer were influential and the performance with it being Queensland's first 20 plus point win in three years. They had the momentum going into game three where they played at the neutral Dockland Stadium in Melbourne. Queensland started cool. off well with the unexpected selection of Mogg again scoring a freakish try. <laughs> New South Wales would return serve though. The next points would not come into the 70th minute mark. They were then down 14-10 with six minutes remaining when we were given a moment of absolute madness. Slow to get back. In an incredible turn of events, Lockie had won the game and the series for the Maroons. Wild. This single moment is where the trajectory of origin football was altered for years to come. Okay. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this documentary content, don't forget to subscribe. Only 7.3% of you are at the moment. I would love to get that number up. This video took me oh, around wow. a week and a half. To That's wild. When was this video uploaded? That was a few years ago. Yeah, make sure to sub to him, guys. Make sure, like... I know some people, like... I mean, me included, I always forget to sub to people when I'm watching stuff. But yeah, it, it actually does help a lot. And it's like... Yeah, especially when they're, like... I understand not subbing to my stuff because mine's kind of like I'm just just like me watching stuff. But yeah, these guys actually make like really high quality videos, and it's yeah. So make sure make sure to sub to Alpha here because he's 
it's, sh- it's a shockingly low number of subscribers because most of those videos we've done have gotten a ton of views. So yeah, make sure, just go sub to him right now. It's, it's in the description. Go sub to Alpha. To make, and it's unlikely that I'm going to get much money off it due to copyright. It took me over 3,500 yeah. words of scripting. Yeah, that's so wild. pressing that subscribe button would go a long way. Thanks, guys. The 2007 State of Origin series was a tale of hard fought. Yeah, it's an issue with combat. with the NRL stuff, especially. The they don't let you monetize it, so you gotta Storm out support it with an 18-6 lead, which was capped off by an outstanding individual piece of brilliance by Blues debutant Jared Hayne, able to keep his low, with English scoring his second in nine minutes into the second half. After having a try ruled out for a forward pass as well, Steve Price would complete a crash play to tie the scores. The moment would give us the conclusion to the game, which was run that was cruel, but highlighted the series of highs and lows that occur at the origin level. Jared Hayne, who had just pulled off a miraculous try in the previous half, would have a moment to forget. With the possibility of a 40-20 off the boot of Cam Smith, Hayne would recover the ball the second half tied at 6-6. The deadlock would be broken though, after a piece of brilliance by Jonathan Thurston nice. and Curving Grubber. There was serious debate for the pass in the lead up which appeared to be forward, but from then on, oh, yeah. Queensland gallantly I didn't even defended that. their line with the Thurston game was the one of the guys in the clear video the I think he did, right? He's one of the three greatest. The uh, win would give the Maroons back to back series wins, and even though they dropped the final game, they were the far dominant side in the series. Sorry guys, one second, let me pause this again. GI Angels. What what team did they say he plays for? Mar- Maroons, okay, sorry. I, I, I forgot which one they said he ended up playing for. Yeah, so he was on the Maroons. Oh, they literally just... The introduction okay. <laughs> of Premiership winning coach Craig Bellamy as the new Blues coach literally the next a different second of the video. 2008 series. The 2008 series started poorly for Queensland, falling to a Brett Stewart and Mark Gasnier sure. masterclass. They knew they had to make changes, and fast, if they were going to save this series. Game 2 would see 10 positional changes to the Queensland Maroon side, most notably the introduction and debut for a very young Darius Boyd. Okay. Criticism had been heaped upon Inglis, who was outplayed by Gaznier in Game 1. Fortunately for Queensland, both Boyd and Inglis stood up for Game 2 in front of a sold-out Suncorp Stadium. Nice. Just six minutes in, we saw the sheer power and speed of Inglis fending off two mm-hmm. defenders and setting up Darius Boyd. He looks so young in that try. right there. Boyd would go in again off an Inglis assist, with the Maroons continuing their rampant display. Oh man, first and boot home, three penalty goals to bring the score to 18. Before Queensland scored two more converted tries to win 30 to nil. Greg Inglis amassed 239 run meters, and his two amazing Jeez. try assists made his game two performance rank as one of the more dominant displays in modern wow. NRL history. This would be the second time New South Wales would be held scoreless, and they did it all without Darren Lockyer. Game 3 was a beauty. It was the huge decider in a true origin fashion, with a Petro 7 receiver high shot knocking out Ben Cross, starting a brawl in the first minute. <laughs> Punches were thrown as it set the scene the for this tense match. Both teams exchanged tries before, we were given a moment of pure athleticism, which produced an amazing origin try. Ooh. Flau leaps, Wild. and in oh. what seemed like a scene from Space Jam, would catch, twist, and contort his body to score. Jeez. These outer-worldly moments That's dictate insane. the outcomes of these games. Ben Cross was again in the wars, as Nate Miles picked him up and threw him on his head, which Jeez. ensued another punch-on. In amongst all this madness was Jonathan Thurston, who found Thurston? the gap, throwing yeah. a filthy dummy to set up oh. Billy the Kid. For the series seal Billy the try. Kid series New South Wales seal, series, uh, but they sealing. succumbed to two moments of individual brilliance. JT would win nice. the Wally Lewis medal for his heroic performances as he pushed his name into the upper the mascot of in the NRL room. superstars. <laughs> Didn't they just have games one and two was oh. more of the same? English was impeccable, blitzing the entire New South Wales defense the entire series. With three tries and two try assists across the series, he once again showed just see this? why he was the best center in the competition. Lockyer, Smith and Slater received right few applauds, but remained influential. The Blues fell victim to an enormous amount of errors, which especially costed them in okay. game two. Their only consistent source of offense was Jared Hayne, who by himself kept the Blues in both games one and two. 
the series would be clinched by the Maroons in Game 2 by none other than Cameron Smith, who dived over after another calamitous yes. New South Wales error. They made it four years in a row, with Queensland on another level to the Maroons. Wow. <laughs> this dominant display should be what many remember of this series, but it isn't. The series was decided in Game 2, but by the way the series ended, you would not know it. The Blues were on their way to a consolation win after Haynes scored in the corner. What happened in back play could not be seen till after the try with a fight breaking out. Brett White and Steve Price were swinging for the <laughs> fences with White connecting before Trent Waterhouse came across and tackled Price. Oh, there had been a few skirmishes throughout the game, but this one involved a knocked out Steve Price. Brett White, the yeah. perpetrator, had said there had been talk prior to the game about standing up for yourself. And in that moment, he felt it was necessary to swing. Price went on to say he was disappointed because fighting was not part of his game. Waterhouse, who jumped into the fight, was put in a rear naked choke by GI and said he almost passed out. Steve Price explained that he respected White and that it was just what happened on the footy field. Yeah. Although he was disappointed with the actions of Justin Poray, who picked Hey, what was that? Yeah, what a fucking unconscious. The Maroons would catch this Justin Poirier. Who's that guy? Justin Poirier? What a loser. That's like... Although he was disappointed... That's so fucked up. Like, if he had a neck injury or something, like, he could have, like... Man. Did that guy get in shit for that? Like, actual trouble? Because that, like... Like, that's so dangerous to do that to someone that's unconscious. Like, you could you could actually... Like, if, if his neck was broken or something and he did that, that, that could be, like... Jeez. Did he did he get knocked out from the punch or was it when he got um like look like he got tackled like punched and then tackled at the same time? Is that what happened there? Yeah. That's wild. Pointed with the actions of Justin Poray, who picked him up and dropped him whilst unconscious. Jesus. The Maroons would catch this on the big screen and were livid, with Lockyer giving the call to kick the ball to New South Wales and then tackle them hard. This yeah. led to the unlucky Kurt Gidley getting absolutely walloped <laughs> and another melee breaking out. <laughs> this is a random guy who just gets destroyed because of it. Sent off. This was the last complete meltdown we saw in State of Origin. New South Wales would win the game, but Queensland would win the series. Mm -hmm. Whitewash. The 2010 series was over before it started. The Blues would find themselves 14-28 to 28 down at ANZ Stadium, and even after putting on a late fight back, they could not overcome Queensland, losing 24-28. to 28. The game was okay. a timid affair compared to the previous year, with JT's banana kick for a slated try the game's highlight. In Game 2, it seemed New South Wales' goal was purely to fight the Queenslanders rather than win. With Game 2 up mm. at Suncorp, it was always going to be difficult. This O'Donnell tackle oh my rightfully started a brawl, with him throwing punches and not being sent off. It's been some crazy, like... With Queensland continuing yeah, geez, their dominance, going on? New South Wales were frustrated and another fight would break out before Queensland easily secured their fifth That's straight. awesome, though, like... At this point, <laughs> Origin had become comical. It's the reminding me of hockey a, a lot. No I've said that a bunch, but yeah, it's as like... Queensland wiped the floor with the Blues. Yeah, just destroyed Game them. 3 gave Queensland the prospect to complete the first Maroons whitewash since 1995. And the whitewash when you with win all South three? Wales back in Sydney for must, Game must 3, they did not want to be embarrassed, but even with a prideful fight, they were downed by one point at half time. A moment that would occur in the second half would resemble what Maroons footy really is, and the resilience this Maroons side had. A marauding Anthony Watmo looked a sure thing to score, he only had to beat the meagre Billy Slater to put his side ahead. Slater would dive and wrap his arm around Watmo, securing the ball in one motion. A Herculean effort that summed up both himself and this successful Maroon side. He could have easily given up there, they'd already had the series in the bag, but to hold on showed that Queensland spirit that made this team so great. Billy would go down to the other end of the field 10 minutes later to score, with these magic moments sparing the Queenslanders to a memorable comeback win with Billy winning player of the series. Yes. Death taxes and Maroons origin wins. <laughs> For the 2011 State of Origin series, I've split the three games into single moments which I believed described those games. For game one, we saw New South Wales <laughs> actually play quite well in Brisbane, defending their line for the majority of the game and holding on 10 points down. 
New South Wales would ascend with two second half tries to put themselves in front. It was not until we got a classic Maroon set play that the game would be decided. The sight of Slater being shot out of a cannon for a try was all too familiar for New South Wales fans. <laughs> but the set move was something they continued to do nice. but was unable to be stopped. In game two, Will Hopawati's moment where he scored an incredible try on debut symbolized the Blues' reliance on individual brilliance throughout this period. We saw early on with Hayne being their main threat and within this, Maroon's dominance, New South Wales would be able to scrape together single wins purely through individuals like they did in this game. In the final and deciding game, Queensland once again proved their salt. The Thurston grubber to Inglis is another play many of us were accustomed to, and it nice, set the yeah. tone. They also got in a classic oh, yeah. Slater try like that, they did I in think, game in one. A, in a New really South Wales knew what Queensland wanted to do, but they were unable to stop them. Queensland would comfortably take this game and push the streak to six series. The 2012 series was spectacular in many ways. It was the first sign of New South Wales life and the emergence of a new state of origin Queensland superstar. Queensland would almost escape game one with a win, as some controversial refereeing decisions and a lack of discipline cost New South Wales dearly. Michael Jennings' impression of a Superman punch Ooh. got him sin binned, which allowed Queensland back yeah, into the game. They'll do it. Queensland would score during this period, where both sides went back and forth until Greg Inglis scored the deciding try with eight minutes to play. Both the commentary team and Paul Gallen were convinced the try shouldn't have been awarded, but Farrah's foot was deemed to be deliberate and was awarded a penalty hmm. try. New South Wales did not okay. back down though, as in game two, misconduct by Cole oh. would cause a sin bin oh. and give New South Wales the upper hand. New South Wales relied on Brett Stewart and Todd Carney heavily to lead 16-12 with 10 minutes remaining. It was a crossfield bomb from Cronk to the arms of Tate where most Blues fans would have held their breath. Tate came down with the ball but was denied by the timely intervention by Jennings who knocked the ball out just in time. Nice, this okay. clutch play sealed the win for New South Wales and brought it to a decider in Brisbane. Nice, I guess this is the closest the one they've had then. The 2012 series was what many considered to be one of the greatest games of origin footy. Okay, awesome. this moment, which will be series defining. Before we watch greatness, oh. let's take a look at how we got there. The match does he block it? I'm guessing he New doesn't, South but... Wales scoring first and then Queensland quickly replying. Thurston provided some brilliance to score with Hodges doing the same. New South Wales produced a second half fight back with Morris scoring a try of the highest quality. Todd Carney would slot it coolly from the sideline to set up a grandstand finish. And now we re-enter that moment. This is one of the great state of origin moments. Cooper Cronk with this. Sorry guys, one sec. Looked like uh, Rose wanted to leave, so we had to get this her out of here. his name into origin <laughs> folklore. So they're on the yeah. Wait, sorry, Cooper Cronk. Well, you're on that and Cooper. now we re-enter that moment. Yeah, this Cooper. is one of the great state of origin moments. Cooper Cronk with this Cooper etched Cronk. his name into origin folklore. So they're on the last tackle and Cooper's gone for a long range shot. Oh, wow. Got wow. What a Wales kick. New South would throw everything at Queensland during this game, but just came up short. This is one of those games that still remains memorable to this day. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Eight straight. Game one of the 2013 series was a great Blues display. In what was uncommon considering the previous eight years, 14 to nil lead in what was probably their best half during this eight year period. Is 14 to top it off, we were given our last proper state of origin melee to conclude the first half. <laughs> the last proper state of origin melee. with a swinging arm. Oh, Fisty man. cuffs were on between Nate Miles and Paul Gallen. Gallen landed four clean blows in what was a one-sided fight. Looking back on it with the boxing career Gallen has had, it may have not been the wisest decision from Nate Miles. During the second half, yeah, Queensland could only muster one try as New South Wales walked out winners. Game two started incredibly well for Queensland this time. Their trademark fast start at Suncorp was on show, as they scored four unanswered tries. <laughs> the usual suspects were on show, tries for Boyd, Thide and Inglis, with the accurate kicking boot of Jonathan Thurston proving way too much for New South Wales to handle. This meant yet again we were heading to a decider, this time on New South Wales soil. In game three, Baltimore New South Wales were without notables, Gallen and Hayne, which would make the okay. task much tougher. The game started with a Queensland attacking onslaught as Thurston weaved and barged his way over yeah. for the game's first points. 
proving once again that he turned up in the biggest games. And yeah, that, that's what people were saying in the in that Nathan Cleary video I did, talking about the goats of uh of that of their position. Thurston is like the one that's every, every level of play he's been like successful. Would so score it's, to answer back. It's hard to argue him. Four six after a Maloney misconversion. The second half was very tentative as no one wanted to make a mistake. It took some Blues self-destruction through drop balls to allow Justin to through this time some straightforward running by Trent Merrin. Captain Cameron Smith would carefully game manage the final eight minutes though, with New South Wales' last roll of the dice falling short. This meant that Queensland would yet again win the series and two consecutive years have fought nice. off a fierce New South Wales side in the final yeah, so game. So the, blue, the Blues are getting a bit better, Names but they're like still Dine, not able to Parker, take Parker, Slater, Lockyer, Inglis, Smith, Seven Deceiver, Webke, Scott and Thurston were all crucial to this heroic run. And their contributions to not only origin, but the <laughs> sport cannot be overstated. In fact, the eight straight winning Queensland Maroons were not only one of the greatest state of origin sides, but one of the most successful teams we will ever see in Australian sport. Mm -hmm. Nice, probably more than just Australian sport. So that like. ends this documentary looking at how Queensland won eight straight state of origin. Like not, many series. not many teams can say that. If you have any other suggestions, let me know in the comments and also like, subscribe, right. and hit that. Yeah, so that was that was the Queensland Maroons documentary for eight straight wins. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that means they lost in 2014. Um, I mean, yeah, definitely, definitely did if, if it would have been nine straight. But yeah, no, that, that's cool. I, I think what you guys were saying is that it's a bit more even. It's more even now, I guess, might be the way to, I believe. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, so, so that was awesome. Um, I guess, was it because uh, the Maroons had so many good players or was it an, like more of a combo of, well, no, there was obviously a bunch of really good players in the Maroons, just yeah, tons of guys I'd heard heard of for sure. But was there like a situation where maybe the Blues, like the coaching and like the the, te the people that pick the teams and stuff, maybe were making bad choices, or was it just the Maroons were just such a good team? Like, yeah, and I guess I guess certain regions too would would go through lulls. Like I know in in hockey, I guess like cer certain countries will they'll have like a five year period where maybe they're their best players are getting older and they don't have any young players that are up and coming just yet so they go through like a lull where they're just not as good as they usually are um yeah let me know some more context on that i guess about why but why they're so good or or if it was any, anything wrong with the blue side that caused them to be so good maybe um but yeah i gotta do this this alpha channel is is honestly it's so good for like, I think I've said that a bunch, but yeah, make, make sure to subscribe to them because yeah, I think I'm going to start doing more videos from them because they seem to be the go-to like for league stuff. I know, like I know for for rugby, for those of you that I mean, I mean, not many of the not many of you, but for those of you that do watch rugby as well, there's there's a guy called Squid Rugby. That's just, that's like uh, he does similar videos like this, but just for rugby. So yeah, definitely gonna keep watching Alpha. Uh, go show them some support because we obviously we need we need as many uh, as many content creators as possible for. Uh, for league and rugby um yeah he, he's got a, he's got a ton of uh ton of videos Look, looks like they actually he took a break for a year looks like and then the last couple of weeks he's been doing it more so yeah 100 percent. go go show him love go like all his videos go comment um yeah make make sure yeah make sure you go do that um yeah We'll just we'll just end it there. If you if you enjoyed the videos, make sure to drop me a sub as well. Um, I'm trying to trying to get to more league stuff, and yeah, uh, fr uh, Friday no, that be Saturday for you guys. Saturday Warriors Sea Eagles. I'm gonna try to get a live stream for that. Um, I have to get my uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Have a good one.